Okay, let's talk about the ASVAB exam. And if you're watching this video, assume that you um, are already uh, familiar with the ASVAB. If you're not, it stands for um, ASVAB is Armed Forces or Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. It's basically uh, the test that you need to take uh, before enlisting in the U.S. military to determine what kind of job you're going to be able to qualify for. So we're going to be talking about the ASVAB. If you stick around, I'm going to share a little bit about my personal experience in the U.S. military and why you really want to take the math seriously. Okay, that's going to be on here. And not just the math, all the topics, but I'm going to be talking specifically about, uh, about math and how if, um, if you don't take this seriously, how it's going to potentially impact you in ways that you can't see right now. So let's get right into it. Um, I will say right up front, if you're struggling with math or you're concerned about math for the ASVAB, I offer a um, uh, ASVAB math prep course. I'll leave the link in the description of the video if you like my teaching style or have been following me on YouTube. I also have hundreds of math videos that will help you get, um, get ready for, um, you know, really strengthening your math skills that will serve you well on ASVAB. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing to my channel. But with that being said, let's get into this. So basically, um, just very quickly on my, my story, um, I've done a lot of things in my life. I'm not young, but I'm not old. <laughs> but uh, the first thing I did when I was 18 years old was join the Marine Corps. I enlisted in the Marine Corps. And this was the days before YouTube and the Internet and all that kind of good stuff. So I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> kind of, you know, it was it was really, a, uh, let's just say, um, a pretty intense experience. But one that was such an impactful um, experience uh, that it really set the tone for the rest of my life. It helped with the discipline, just the, the mentality. You know, I, I um, you know, all, much of my success, I um, thank the United States Marine Corps. I owe to the Marine Corps. And not just the Marine Corps, because I also did a tour as an officer in the United States Navy. I was a United States Navy surface warfare officer. So the entire... Uh, my entire military experience is something that, you know, just lays the foundation of so much of what I think, you know, I've been successful for, successful for in my life. So um, this video is, you know, what I've, you know, the math that I teach is kind of, you know, for those of you out there that are going into military, I'm glad that you're watching me because in some ways, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, how I can kind of, you know, contribute and give back. So I'm going to do my best to give you my... Um, uh, opinion and suggestions, you know, on the ASVAB math section. Now, my background is I'm a math teacher, taught sixth grade through college, so I'm going to couple my military experience with my math teacher experience and combine them together to give you some um, some really strong points to consider right now if you're looking at going into the U.S. military. Okay. All right. So with that being said. Let's get uh, uh, into it. Now, the ASVAB is, just a quick review for those of you who are, are kind of familiar with it, but not quite sure. I and mean, if you already are working with a recruiter, it's likely that you've already taken the exam or you may, may need to take it again, or you're studying for it because you didn't do well enough. But basically, the ASVAB is an exam. You get a set of scores, okay? Um, uh, measures various aptitudes, but all these scores are going to determine what type of job you're going to get in the U.S. military. Now, jobs in the military are called, are kind of, um, they don't call them jobs per se. They go by uh, terms like MOS, which is a military occupational uh, specialty. Or if you're in the Navy, you might um, have a rate or a specialty. But basically, MOS, your rate, your specialty, your ASVAB score, plus other th um possible other additional physical qualifications um, are going to determine whether what type of job what you're going to be doing in the service okay so probably already telling you things that you already know now what I'm going to tell you right now is something that um, you may or may not know or someone's uh, may have not told you this maybe your recruiter hasn't even told you this so let's look at two kind of typical uh, career paths and this is actually not my career path because I did a I did about almost 10 years in the service. So what I'm going to talk about is this, right? Most enlistments are four years, okay? So a lot of people come in, they'll, they'll go in four years. Some people go in six. And then if you're going to make a career of it, 
okay, you're going to do, say, 20 years, right? At least 20 years, maybe even up to 30 years or even longer. I think the longest you can go is maybe 35 years, but I could be uh, I could be wrong. But this is, let's, let's say this is, you know, what you're thinking about. Maybe you're thinking that, hey, I want to do 20 years in the U.S. Army. You know, I'm gung-ho. I want to go to airborne or, or do whatever you want to do. So you're thinking in those terms. You're like, I'm going to go 20 years. Maybe you're a person that says, I'm going to do eight, uh, four years in the Air Force, get some training, some skills, and then leave. Okay. Well, here's what I'm going to share with you. You have these thoughts right here before you're going into the service. You're thinking this or that, right? Everything changes once you get into the military. Okay. What I'm ta- what I'm saying is this. You're going to start actually getting real experience, you know, real life experience. You're going to be living it, not thinking about it. And I've known so many people that thought they were just going to do four years in the military and get out. Their, that was their game plan. They did like the whole 20 years, okay, and then some. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm that old, right? <laughs> Anyways, then I knew people uh, that were gung-ho. I'm going to go, you know, military is everything, da-da-da, and then they get out after four years. So you really, oftentimes, you, your, your plans can change, okay? Your interests can change. So right now, when you're 18 years old, you don't really know any better. You think that you want to be an air traffic controller. Next thing you know, you want to switch and be a, a you know, an, an infantry for uh, going to the infantry or artillery or or fly helicopters or whatever. You know, so you, you go in thinking one thing, and then you 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 find out that you wanted to do something else. So you can actually switch jobs while you're in the military. It's not easy, but you can do it. Um, uh, people do do it, but you have to go through a process. Sometimes, oftentimes, you definitely have to re-enlist. I'm pretty certain of that. So um, now, where is this going? This is not just a military you know, history um, a video, right? I need to kind of bring this back into math, and I'm going to do that right now. What I'm, going to, what I'm driving at is this. You're, you do not know really how you're going to end up liking what you're going to be going into, okay? But chances are you may very well like it. You're definitely going to appreciate your military experience for sure as a veteran. But your job, you may want to switch jobs, okay? Or, you know, you want to have options. Now, that being said, your ASVAB scores are critical. They're critical, okay? And they're going to follow you, right? So you may be taking, I don't know, quite frankly, I don't remember if they um, let you take the ASVAB again while you're enlisted, it might. Uh, I'm, I would think they probably would let you test again. Um, but your initial ASVAB scores, they're going to follow you. Okay, so all this stuff kind of goes into your kind of your permanent record, if you will. So the thing is, you want to do as strong as possible on this on this aptitude battery. Okay, on all these tests, which math is a component. Okay. They don't have like specifically, hey, this is the math portion of it. Your you're, you're, math is going to be a part of the skills that you need. Think about it. We're in a high tech military. Okay, you need to have aptitude um, today. You need to know how to read. You know how to, you know. And I'm just talking about basic reading. You have to be intelligent. Okay. Uh, today's military is, you know, it's not like, you know, you're being drafted, you know, 50 years ago. And unfortunately, um, you know, there's a side commentary. You know, years and years ago, they would take people that didn't even have high school diplomas. They would just draft them into the service, give them some some real basic training, and, and you know, and off they went. Today, you have to go through a lot of training. You know, just even make it through recruit training or boot camp. There's a lot of training. Um, you get a round of equip, uh, equipment, high-tech equipment, whether it's a ship, an aircraft. Hey, you need to have math aptitude. You got to be intelligent. You know, you have to know how to write. You know, write emails. You have to know how to read procedures. You have to be able to think on your feet. So having an analytical aptitude, which is math, is integral to, is important, extremely important. Okay. So math, you need to take it serious. So if you're in high school right now and you're just kind of like, oh, you know, I'm just kind of counting the days, not paying t- paying attention to your education just so I can go into the military, well, I would strongly suggest that you, you know, change your attitude about your education because it's going to follow you. Your education is going to follow you. So this is where I'm going to tie this in to math, okay? The further you get away from high school, 
the the the, the, the your math skills are going to become rustier and rustier, if you will, right? Because you're not going to be doing math all the time. So if you need to take any exam, you're going to have to do significant review. So I don't know where you're, if you're watching this video, I don't know if you're um, in high school. Probably many of you are in high school. Some of you might be in junior college. Some of you might just be young, um, just kind of thinking about it. But you want to take your preparation for the ASVAB, the entire ASVAB, very seriously. What I'm here to talk to you about is the math um, uh, component of it and how you can approach that. So my suggestion to you is twofold. Basically, you want to have, you want to get into some sort of learning uh, course, a course where there's some sort of teacher, like a video-based course, something like what I have. There's other things probably out there as well. And then you want to couple that with a good um, test prep book, okay? So something you can buy in a bookstore, get on Amazon, something that gives you practice tips, uh, test-taking tips, etc. But for the math component, you just can't, you can't learn math by not studying math, okay? And, and if you struggle with math, you can't review. Reviewing math, if you struggle with it, isn't going to work. You're not Because you're going to be re reviewing things that you really never understood in the first place. So you're going to have to put the time and effort in to really learn. Now, what I would suggest for most um, uh, of you out there going into military is a good, strong, fundamental um background in algebra and geometry, high school level algebra and geometry will, will really serve you very well on the ASVAB. Plus you have to get familiar with the type of questions on it, but that having that as a fundamental education would be excellent. Now some of you, okay, can very well be going on to very advanced things and uh, as uh, enlisting in the military, something like uh, U.S. Navy, you might be going on submarines where you're going to have to go into a uh, nuclear engineering, which is extremely, you're going to be doing advanced mathematics and physics and chemistry. I mean, it's like, it's like almost like very much like college engineering program. And even though you're not an officer or in college, you're going to have significant, um, uh, science and engineering, uh, courses. All right. Same thing. Like if you're going probably crypto, um, crypto cryptology, code breaking or information technology or electronic technician, Anything high tech, whatnot, when there's a ton of these type of jobs out there, you're going to have to, you know, have very strong mathematical skills because you're going to be working with formulas. Okay. So believe me, you're, uh, you might be thinking in your head, oh, I want to do this in the military. This looks so cool. You know, I want to, I want to do this, this, and that. And then you come to find out that, wow, the training program is two years for that and it's comprehensive and they move quick. And if you don't, you know, if you don't already have the skills coming in the door, you're going to struggle. And and once you sign a contract and you go into the military and you're in this particular school that, you know, you qualify for, but you're really some kind of minimally qualified, but you got your foot in a door and then you fail out of that school for whatever reason, you're going to go into another job. Okay. And you very well may not like that job. Uh, and then at the end of your four years, you're going to be saying, okay, what am I going to do? What's my options? And you're going to think about it. Just believe me when I tell you, again, I'm going to stress this. Some of you out there think uh, you already know your story in advance. Well, at the end of four years, I'm going to get out and, and that's it. I'm done with it. But I knew a lot of, uh, uh, people in the military, uh, especially in the Marine Corps that they started, they enlisted by the time they were, uh, four years later, when they had to consider re-enlisting, they were already married with a young child. And now they kind of depended upon the income. And, and you know, there's there's all kinds of factors that could in, um, affect what what your decision is going to be. And by the way, too, the military may, <laughs> may not even let you re-enlist, especially if you haven't done well. Again, all the more reason to start your military career strong, okay? Have to have strong ASVAB, um, ASVAB scores. Okay. And right now I really suge I suggest, even though you're not in the military, you might be in the delayed entry program, but you should start thinking to yourself, Hey, you that effectively that you, you need to start thinking like a military person, right? The accomplish the mission, like take things seriously in the military. You've got to take education extremely seriously. And so your high school education or whatever your self-education, you should be taken just as seriously as well. Okay? Because you're going to be, this is your one shot at, 
at setting yourself up for the most the different uh, opportunities uh, in the service. And, you know, you should take advantage of everything that your potential uh, allows. But if I guess what I'm trying to stress to you is this. If you haven't done well in math up to this point, do something about it, okay? I'm going to tell you from years and years of experience as a math teacher that you can do significantly better math. You just have to make that decision, and you got to find a teacher that you like and understand, okay? Again, if you like the way I teach, you can check out my full um, uh, comprehensive ASRAB math uh, uh, test prep uh, course. I'll leave the link again in the description, but... Find someone else, a tutor, go to, uh, you know, there's all types of options out there, okay? But with that being said, you know, I'm going to kind of wrap this video up here. Um, I just wanted to wake you up if you weren't already aware. Probably a lot of you already kind of understand, hey, where I'm coming from because your recruiters probably already told you, hey, take this serious. You need these um, tests. And maybe you've taken ASVAB and you haven't qualified for the job that you want. But even if you did and you're going to have another opportunity at it, do the best you can. And by the way, too, you could do a lot. You can significantly increase your scores with the right study program, working it intensely over a matter of weeks and, you know, months. It doesn't have, you don't have to study for a full year, you know, to do this, but you do have to get engaged. But hopefully you enjoyed this video, got something out of it. If you did, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. If you like the way I teach, already on my channel, I have hundreds of math videos that can benefit you for the ASVAB. And um, let me know what uh, what you thought about this video. Maybe your recruiter's giving you some other um, tips or options or whatnot. You know, of course, you know, I was in the service uh, many years ago, uh, so things have uh, changed. But yes, things have changed, but generally, but also too. Things are kind of still somewhat similar in the respects that, hey, the military is looking for good people. This, you know, this is an all-volunteer service. There's, we don't have a draft. It's getting more high-tech by the minute, okay? So if you're in the U.S. military or going into the U.S. military, that's a, it's a, you're, 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 you're having a wonderful opportunity here. Yes, you know, there's the deployments and all that stuff, but that's what you're signing up for, okay? But I do want to thank thank you, okay, if you haven't, uh, that you, um, whoever is watching this video, if you're going in and you're signing, you're taking an oath of enlistment, I want to thank you. I want to wish you the best of luck, and thank you for, um, you know, serving our, our great country, okay? And I wish you all the best, but take that ASVAB serious. It's the right thing to do for you. All right, with that being said, thanks for watching, and have a great day.